2020 was a year for change, and a change that was unlike any other. But sometimes a change for good, and that was the case with the video game industry. A change that was good for the players, but not as good for the developers of this year's biggest titles. In March of 2020, the pandemic had just started, and it just happened to coincide with the release of Nintendo's biggest title, Animal Crossing New Horizons. A game with no clear end or objective, just land on this island full of characters and make it how you like. This was one of the first surprises of the pandemic, what at first was speculated to be a drop of video game sales and increase due to the pandemic because people had stopped working and need money to save up, ended up being the opposite. More people had more free time and more money since nobody was going out and nobody was working. This started a huge spike in sales for the Nintendo Switch, selling almost 3 million units in 2020 alone. Everybody was buying a Nintendo Switch and Animal Crossing to have something to serve as a distraction for them during this pandemic and quarantine. It was also a way for people to spend time with each other. People, other players were able to visit other players' islands and spend time with loved ones and family in a sort of virtual meeting that's much more interactive. In the summer of 2020, video games had started to bring more people together. Streaming on the popular Twitch platform was at an all-time high and was increasing exponentially. It allowed people to interact with people from all around the world, not just from the people that were streaming the games, but from the people in the chat and the communities that people were starting to build together. Popular streamers were streaming games like Animal Crossing, Call of Duty Warzone, Among Us, and Fall Guys. All these games were basically made to have people be much more social with each other, especially popular social games like Among Us and Fall Guys, which the main focus was to have fun and interact with your friends and other players. To start the pandemic, it really helped a lot because me and my friend, like my friend groups, I'm very, like, I'm very close with and we all have very similar hobbies. So it was one of those things like we were able to get very close with each other at the very beginning of the pandemic in which we would like schedule game nights and game nights would be legitimately every Monday and Thursday, which they still are every Monday and Thursday. Granted, they've tapered off a little bit with attendance, mm -hmm. but I mean, for all intents and purposes, like we all became very close. We all became very um, familiar with each other and everything else. And it, it brought us together. However, the pandemic started to take its toll on the industry around this time. Huge events and conventions like E3 and Gamescom were starting to either be cancelled or changed drastically due to being able to adapt to the quarantine and pandemic guidelines to keep everybody safe. Physical game sales were plummeting and local game outlet stores were only hanging on by a thread. On top of that, dozens of developers of this year's huge and biggest games were starting to delay their games more and more and more and some even suffering from that. At the very least, the games had rush launches and missing features and stuff like that. However, others were outright rushed for release despite the dozens of delays. Fall had come around with the anticipation of Microsoft's and Sony's brand new next-gen consoles, both releasing in ways never seen before and or from prior generations. Pre-orders for the brand new consoles were a mess at best, due to them constantly being out of stock because of the shortage of parts and production time given because of the pandemic. Another noticeable difference in the console launch was the lack of titles releasing alongside these consoles and a surprising price increase for games bumping from $60 up to $70 for a brand new game, mainly on the PlayStation 5, while Xbox was approaching a brand new strategy with their brand new Game Pass initiative that serves more like a Netflix subscription service that grants players hundreds of games per month for only 15 bucks a month. At the beginning of 2021, more and more and more delays kept happening and we started to see the true effects of the COVID-19 pandemic, since most of these titles were already still in mid-production. Very few new releases were around, and whatever was coming out was quickly forgotten in about a week or two. Thankfully, as of April, the industry has started to slowly come back on track. E3 has returned, is slated to have all of the big publishers out there showing off the newest games and titles to be released soon. More games are being released, with this month's biggest titles being some of the biggest hitters of the year so far. And consoles are being reworked now so that there's a more efficient parts to be made and produced so more consoles are being made. Not only that, but the industry has adapted and changed over this past year. But so have the players. 
finding new ways to connect with each other no matter what is going on. People felt connected in a world that was mainly disconnected for the most part. And it was the one thing that was getting them by. These games, games like Animal Crossing, Among Us. Social games that allowed people to interact with each other in ways that they weren't able to before. The gaming has always been a weird thing for me because I people always associated with like being isolated, I guess, and kind of separating yourself from other people. I've always found it to be the opposite. So I've always viewed gaming like as something that you do with people and it's like, you know, party style. It doesn't have to be party games, but yeah, it's just, it's much more fun playing it with other people. And that's how game, I mean, that's how games always have been. Industry norms have changed as well. War Crunch was looked down upon, especially after the launch of the popular title Cyberpunk 2077. Podcasting and streaming was at an all-time high, and it really proved that despite the setbacks and obstacles, there's always some way to stay connected and have fun. I think if the pandemic has shown us anything, it's that like there is a value to it, to having this thing of, of virtually being able to hang out with other people. So I definitely think there will always be a market for it because of the social distancing and because I haven't really seen my friends in person all that time. Uh, through things like Discord, we were able to set up gaming nights where we do like tabletop simulator or pummel party, just basically like all these party games, you know, I mean, that's part of one of the reasons why Among Us got so big because like, you know, people like us, we're doing that as a, as a form of communal, uh, communal ship.